our service this morning. It's a beautiful, hot morning. Why don't you just smile and somebody tell them that God is in control. Smile and someone tell them, encourage them this morning that God is in control. Maybe that's the only thing they needed to hear this morning. I just open your mouth and just thank him for this morning. Glorify his name. Appreciate him for the gift of life. As he, said, as he says in his word, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And since we have breath this morning, we can lift up our voices. We can raise our voices to the heavens. I begin to bless the name of the Lord this morning. He's worthy. Yeah. Come on, open your mouth and worship. He's worthy. Oh, 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 oh. we bless your name. He's worthy to be worshipped. Come on, bless His holy name. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be honored. He's worthy to be glorified. Come on, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Oh, we bless your name. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. We honor you this morning. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for putting a roof on our life. We appreciate you, Lord. Oh, 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 you are one, Lord. Yeah. One down on tower. Me, One now. Wadu mubi zazib yote Fadili zako wana Uwaminifu wako Fadili zako wana Kusudi lako Uaminifu wako Fadhili zako bwana Uaminifu wako Fadhili zako bwana Sudilako, 
Are you glad that it rains? Not a Not a Not a Not a Not a Not a Sing it to the Lord and say, Unatawala, Milele. In the good times and the bad times, Unatawala, Una. Even when I cannot see it, even when I don't understand, I know that you reign, Milele. Everybody, Unatawala, Unatawala. You reign, Milele, Unatuala, Milele, And that's why he says in the word, do not worry about anything or be anxious about anything because our God is in church. I encourage someone this morning to tell them, the Lord is in church. I know sometimes it's so hard to see when we are afflicted and conflicted. But even when we cannot see it, even when we cannot understand, his word says that he reigns. And we believe that he reigns. In spite, despite our God still reigns. And that's why we have no reason to fear. That's why we have no reason to do what? To fear. So one more time without understanding. Declare. Unatawala. 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 Zaidi ayote Unatawala Milele Unatawala 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 Milele One more time Unatawala Come on, 
Bless the name of the Lord this morning. I say celebrate the Lord. Put your hands together. It's worthy to be praised. Because his reigns will praise him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue to be on my lips. Hey! This morning, Hakuna. Say my way away. Put your hand like this. Say, Hi, hey, Asta Hili Sipazote. Nitam Sipu Yawe Kwani. Some we knew I are with one knee anywhere, ma. To the dance, to the chairs are one near anywhere, in my way, in my way, do Nia say my way, Hakuna Yahweh, do Nia, I am Shangilia. Say my Haye, Haye. Asta hili si mazote Haye, 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 Hakuna Dunia Hey 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 Come on bless the name of the Lord Dunia Yote Nam Shangilia We will not let the rocks oppress us <laughs> We have come to give God thanks 
handsome for what he has already done. Yeah. Nimekuja kusema asante Nimekuja kusema asante Nimekuja kusema asante Kwa wema wako na fadhili zako Asante mama Nimekuja kusema asante Tumekuja kusema Sema, sema sante baba Hey Ah Tumekuja kusema Sante Tumekuja kusema asante Tumekuja kusema asante Tumekuja kusema asante mama Wafadhili zako mama na wewe Tumekuja kusema Sema sante baba Tumekuja kusema Sema Shukurani zangu Nazileta kwako Shukurani zangu Baba zipoke Moya wangu wa shukuru Nafsi yangu ya kuhimidi baba Kwa fadhili zako kwa wema wako Asante Tumekuja Asante mama Tumekuja kusema Asante Thankful to the Lord. Praise Him with the Lamb. Asante, to me kuja, to me kuja kuse. Tu me gusta, tu me gusta 
Sema Asante Come on, bless the name of the Lord We have come to say thank you Hallelujah Why don't you open your mouth and just begin to thank him For the things that he has done Even for the things that we have not seen But they are about to happen Give God thanks Father Lord, we give you thanks We appreciate you, O oh Lord For what you've already done And for what you've done already we give you thanks in advance. And we declare that you'll be lifted in our worship, be lifted in our ministry. We worship. Yeah. Come on, bless your name of the Lord. Come on, bless him. Come on, I'm blessed. Come on, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our cross and worship you. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. For we And worship you, oh glorious God. We praise your name. We lay our crowns and worship you, oh be lifted. This morning we lay our crowns and worship. Oh, be lifted. Oh, be lifted. I'm burned. We lay, we lay our crowns and worship. One more time, oh. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crown, lay our crown. and worship. Say, Oh, glorious God, oh. This morning be lifted above every other God. We lay and we worship. Say, Oh, glorious God, oh, we praise. As we worship, oh glorious God, oh we praise, we lay as we worship. Oh, 
Open your mouth and bless him this morning. Worship the Lord. You're my glorious God. We praise your name. We lay our crowns. We lay our crowns. We lay our crowns. We worship you, Lord. Yeah. the name of the Lord. Oh, glorious God, we praise your name. And we worship. Oh, And world. Come on, lift those hands and say, oh, Glorious God. Oh, we praise. We lay, we lay, and I worship. Oh, Glorious God. Come on, bless his name and glorify his name. He's worthy. I say our God is worthy to be lifted. Hallelujah. Uli ni 
everybody on. Yes, 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 You are able to reign a mighty God. You are able, Jesus say you are able to reign a mighty God. You are say you are able. Nothing say there is nothing, nothing you cannot change. Hey, nothing you cannot yeah, I put my trust. You are able, you are able. Put your hand together. One more time, give the praise. Nothing is too hard for our God. Hey, Creator, Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? Name above, name above every other name. What can you? See that situation changing. One more time, Creator. What can't you do? Yeah. The name above the other name. What can't you change? Nothing is too hard for our God. You are able, you are able, great and mighty God. You are able, what is his name? One more time, you are able, you are able, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. You are able. There is nothing said. Hey, nothing you cannot change. Nothing you cannot turn. You are able. Put my trust in you. You are able. Come on, if you believe our God is able, you are able. Come on, proclaim one more time. You are able, you are able. Come on, one more time, say you are, you are able. Jesus, he's worthy to be praised. His word needs to be magnified. Come and clap your hands uh, unto the Lord uh, and shout to Him with a voice of triumph because He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above 
not some, but all we can ever ask or think or imagine according to the power that is at work. Where? Inside of you. <laughs> Give your neighbor a high five. Tell him how God is able. God He's is able, able to turn every situation around. And even today, your situation is turning around. Father, in the name of the Lord, we come before you this morning. We thank you for reminding us that, Lord, there is nothing that is too hard for you. I know some of us came with burdens, had a stressful week. Some of us had a good week. But Lord, even as we have celebrated, as we sung praise and thanksgiving to you, for those who are carrying burdens and situations that look like it's a huge mountain, I pray, O oh God, as we have spoken, as we proclaim, may you turn that situation around, that by the end of this service, when they go home, as they start another week, they will see that situation changed. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say amen. And everybody say amen. Give your neighbor a high five as you take your seat this morning. Amen, 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 amen. I will pray for the children. Then after watching the grace news, you'll be released to go to your classes. Let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord, I thank you for your children, our children. Indeed, they are a gift from you. And we thank you for their lives together with their mentors. Even as they go to their classes, I pray, God, may you be with them. Help them to understand everything they're going to be taught this morning. To the glory and to the honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Children may watch the grace news, the announcement. Then after the grace news, you can be free to go to your classes. Over now to our grace news. Welcome to House of Grace, where grace abounds. This is a grace news that keeps you updated on what's happening here, House of Grace. To all our first-time visitors, Karibuni Sana, it's always an honor to have a guest in the house. If this is your first time, please put your right hand up because our ushers have a special package just for you. We want to get to know you better. Please fill it in and let us know your information because we want to get back to you, answer your questions and pray for you. After this, we'll be having tea at a special tent right outside the church and we want to just share and have a wonderful time with you. So please don't leave immediately after the service. Join us for a cup of tea. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. as we explore and discover truths that we can apply in our lives. Paul is writing, remember, he's writing from prison. And one of the themes um, that actually stands out in this book of, of Philippians is the theme of joy. You know, someone will think, when you read uh, Philippians chapter 4, rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. You think he's sitting on a table. I love kuna kibuk stand up on you. With a lesser seed, he's just swinging eh, from side to side and he's writing rejoice in the Lord <laughs> always and again I say <laughs> rejoice. Meaning joy comes from where? From Christ, from the Lord. It is not determined by what is happening on the outside. You could be broke but still joyful. Still tamakin looking for work, but you still have the joy. The joy of the Lord. It comes from identifying or rather recognizing that the Lord is my source. Whatever happens, happens. But at the end of the day, my life is in God's hands. If you haven't joined yet, please join us every Sunday morning and let your spirit be revived. Let your heart be transformed by the word of God. There's a WhatsApp group that you could join by sending your number on 0725-659-444. Bible study every Sunday morning from 9 a.m. to 9.45.
We look forward to seeing you again this coming Sunday and get ready to be blessed by the word. Our services are 9 a.m. Bible study, 10 a.m. our family service and Sunday school and crossroads, and 12.30 is our youth service. We look forward to a wonderful time every Sunday. God bless you. In Acts chapter 2, verse 46, the Bible says that every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. This is a call out for you. For the second part of this verse, that when we come from fellowshipping together, the Bible is saying that we meet also and break bread together in our homes. A time of fellowship, a time to review what we have learned, a place we can pray for one another, support one another, where we can build friendships, where we can have a support system in what we call grace groups. Are you part of a grace group? If you would like to be part of a grace group, please sign up after the service. We would love to train leaders among us, those that will be leading the small groups. Do you feel that maybe the nature of your lifestyle wouldn't be able to meet you to have people come to your home or you visit another home. We are in a digital edge and I know we can have grace groups virtually. So for those of you that have a lifestyle or busy time when you're not able to go, but you will still like to be part of a grace group, we'll have virtual grace groups. So please still sign up and indicate, I would like to be part of a virtual grace group because we want you to be part of a group that supports you, that stands with you, that prays with you. Sometimes we face difficult times and sometimes it's difficult to reach the pastor. But when you have another group of believers that are with you, then you have strength with you right where you are. Sign up today for a grace group. It's for your good. I promise you, you won't regret it. I'm a partaker. Of course, I love chini and mti conversations. They're hot. I'm a partaker. Of course, I'm growing. I'm a partaker. Of course, I love serving. I'm a partaker. Of course, I have many friends. I'm a partaker. Of course, I never leave the church. I'm a partaker. Of course, I enjoy a healthy cooking. I'm a partaker. Of course, I love celebrating and supporting. I'm a partaker. Of course, I love celebrating Imani yangu ipo kwa koe Welcome to Patekas Na, na mintaji ficha chini yako wewe mwamba We'll be having a prison's visit to the Langata Women's Prison on the 7th of April 2024. We'll be having it after the service from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. If you would like to be a part of those that will be ministering to those that are in Langata Women's Prisons, please sign up after the service and a form that will be presented for you there. Those of you that would like to participate, these are some of the things that we can bring. Tissue paper, arimis, bar soaps, diapers for children, milk, biscuits, lollipops, sanitary towels, toothpaste, toothbrushes, and any kind of books. We also want to help the families that were affected by the fire that took place there earlier on in the month. Please, you can bring utensils for the kitchen. You can bring clothes for children and for adults. Anything you have in your home that you feel you can donate to the families that were affected by the fire that took place there, please be sure to bring. Remember, the date is the 7th of April and God wants to use you to minister to these women. Sign up after the service. See you then. Our next King's Daughters meeting will be on the 13th of April. Ladies, I want to give you early notice. Mark it out on your diary. Our guest speaker on that day will be our very own, Her Excellency, Pastor Dorcas Rigathi. Everything that you need is planted, grounded, founded in faith. For with faith, all things are... It doesn't matter whether yours is a literal faith, greater faith. All you need is a grain of a master seed, equal faith. And God will activate whatever it is that you need. Mm. I tell you, you better begin preparing your heart, begin praying and getting ready for what God has in store for us as ladies for our King's Daughters meeting on the 13th of April.
House of Grace is a caring church and every first Sunday of the month we bring non-perishable goods and clothes to reach out to the needy among us. Proverbs 19:17 One who is gracious to a poor man lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his good deed. Every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., we meet here for our Breakthrough Prayer Service. We invite you every Tuesday, 6 p.m. for a Breakthrough Prayer Service. Come and experience a breakthrough in your life. Today, we're diving into the importance of sleep for your body and mind. Getting enough sleep isn't just about feeling rested. It's crucial for your overall health and well-being. When you sleep, your body goes into repair mode, repairing muscles, organs, and tissues. Sleep also helps regulate your hormones, keeping your appetite in check and supports a healthy metabolism. Creating a bedtime routine and optimizing your sleep environment can help you achieve better sleep quality. Sleep also helps regulate your hormones, keeping your appetite in check and supports a healthy metabolism. Remember, prioritizing sleep is not a luxury, it's a necessity for a healthier, happier you. So, how much sleep do you need? Adults generally require 7 to 9 hours each night, while teenagers may need up to 10 hours. Take care of yourself, and make sleep a priority. Good night, and sweet dreams. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at House of Grace HQ. House of Grace, doing church as a team. Leading you through the rough edges of this life, causing you to walk through water, stamping on scorpions, cobras. God is good all the Come on, somebody, give God a better club than you're doing right now. Hallelujah. Good morning this morning. How was your week? No, no different responses. Shake somebody's hand and tell them it's good to see you this morning in the house of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I know some of you came across cobras. Uh, big ones, others came across small ones. Others experienced blessings. Others experience breakthroughs, some experience closed doors, but whatever you experience, all things work together for good. For them that are called and love God, all things you may not understand some of them, and some of them may not make sense to you now, they will make sense to you later. Amen. Always good to have the second lady of the republic. Please appreciate our second lady. Amen. And it's good to see you too. Can you give yourself a clap? Amen. Just a couple of announcements this morning. Oh. I want to appreciate all the first-time visitors who are visiting us for the very first time and uh, trust that this service is going to be a blessing to you as you're a blessing to us. And if you're here, please uh, just sneak out your hand so that we can give you a visitor's back. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Fill the form and uh, you can give it back to us. I know getting here this morning was quite a challenge uh, because of the roads which are closed. And uh, it looks like we are in the highway of where things happen. Uh, because every time there's something happening, uh, this road is affected somehow. Uh, but they're trying to make adjustments. It's not like before. Uh, and so for you who made it, uh, in spite of the closed doors and roads, uh, we want to thank you. On the 7th of April, it has been announced, you're going to be having a prison's visit. Uh, you can buy and deliver here uh, to the office uh, the things that uh, can be a blessing to the prison visit that we are going to here in Langata. King's Daughters, please diarize this. Again, I'm repeating what was on the Grace News. King's Daughters, you know, sometimes we put it on the Grace News and we announce it and you still don't get it. 
uh, I trust that this, this one you're going to get. It has been on the grace news and I'm announcing it now. Look at your neighbor and tell them King's Daughters. Tell them again King's Daughters. It's going to be on the 13th of April, uh, of course, this year. And uh, we are privileged to have uh, Her Excellency Pastor Dorcas being the speaker uh, on that day of the King's Daughters. The emphasis is going to be prayer. Uh, we will gather here, worship, and uh, have a word. And then after the word, we're going to take some time praying. It's going to be a blessing. The last one was such a tremendous blessing. So we are building on the last one uh, and filling in the things we thought we should have had in the last one in this one. So please remember, I repeat again, on the 13th of April, uh, right here at 10 o'clock. Grace groups, uh, we request people to sign up for grace groups. Uh, those people who uh, will be used by God to host others in their homes. Uh, open your home for maximum one hour. And people can come and just uh, share the word of God together. There's going to be no stress on you to cook for them. Uh, just meet, uh, share the word. And of course you've heard that now you can even join it virtually. If you are bereaved or you are sick or hospitalized or have a loved one admitted in hospital or need counseling because you're going through a difficult time, please, you are invited to call 0725 65 9 0 This is for hospital visits. Uh, you want counseling. You are bereaved and you need the support of the church. Uh, that is a number that you should actually be having on your phone. 6 uh, 0 7 2 5 6 5 9 Triple four. Amen. Trust you're ready for God's word this morning. Amen. Please, if we could be upstanding for God's word. I want us to turn to the book of Exodus chapter 4. The book of Exodus chapter 4. Now that's an easy book to find, by the way. Just go to the Old Testament and go to Genesis. The next one should be Exodus. Genesis, beginning. The next one should be Exodus. Uh, for the new believers, don't try to look for it in the New Testament. I'm sure it's not there. It's not there. You won't find it. <laughs> and if you came with the New Testament alone, maybe today you carried the wrong part. Exodus chapter 4 from verse 1. The Bible says, Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? He said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand 
and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the reading of your words. Bless this portion that you have read to our hearts this morning. Speak to us so vividly and succinctly, clearly, that Lord will leave here having heard your voice. Let heaven rejoice. Let the church be edified. I thank you and I bless your name, Lord. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. And amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Allow me this morning to speak on the subject. What's that? In your hand. What's that in your hand? God has a huge, humongous, preposterous task. of delivering his people from the land of bondage to take them back to the promised land. Canaan ex has experienced salvation. Historians tell us one of the most excruciating starvation that uh, Canaan ever experienced. By the good plan of God, because God knows everything, he knows the beginning to the end, had sent his servant Joseph as an ambassador. Joseph is highly favored in Egypt, becomes the second in command, but number one in practical organization and running of government. The people that sold him didn't know what they were doing when they were selling him as a slave. Like I mentioned, as I began to speak, all things work together for good. Please help me and tell your neighbor all things work together for good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The good, the bad, and the ugly, as long as you're called and you love the Lord, even those who think are selling you, they're just fitting into the purposes of Jehovah God. They are agents being used without knowing. Joseph is sold as a slave, goes ahead of the group that would follow. His father Jacob... Uh, finds out about his son and is told his son has been promoted and his son is second in command in Egypt. Of course, they end up in, Can in uh, Egypt from Canaan. And uh, life was good when Joseph was the prime minister. But the Bible says that a time came when uh, a king arose. Somebody say, a king arose. <laughs> that didn't know this Joseph. And the moment that king arose that didn't know Joseph. Scripture says that life turned for the worst. Those who were favored, favor was not being shown to them anymore. Those who were privileged in the land of Goshen 
started experiencing hardship and slavery was imposed upon them. Where they were given a straw to make bricks treated so badly and a trip that was not supposed to last, historians tell us, lasted for 400 years. For 400 years, they start, started to languish in poverty, in pain, in misery, mistreatment that had no diction. They looked up to God, Jehovah, and they cried out to their God in their state. Let me tell you this morning, even as I continue to introduce my message, when you are in that kind of state of misery and pain, uh, and you have reached your wit's end, there is a God that you can call on. Say amen if you're a Christian. There is a God that you can cry to. Scripture says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things. Things that you do not know of. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him from his feet and lifted him, says the Psalms. Oh yes, that God is a God that answers and hears prayer. They called on a God who hears prayers. They called on a God who answers prayer. I know nowadays prayer is mocked in most circles, but let me tell you, whether they mock prayer or they don't, so there's a God who answers prayers from up above. Can a Christian shout amen? For there is no weapon formed against the church of the living God that shall prosper. Because the weapons that we use are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds. Hallelujah. Pulling down of strongholds. Putting them under your feet. Can I submit to you this morning, even as I continue to preach that the devil is under your feet. Can I say the devil is under your feet? I woke up with the right side of the bed. The devil is under your feet. The devil, I don't know who this is for, but the devil is under your feet. Satan is under your feet. His ploys, his schemes, and all his tricks, they are under your feet this morning. He can do all he wants to do, but you will have the last laugh. Say hallelujah if you believe it. God then has to come up with a plot because he's the Alpha and the Omega. And he knows how to get you out of the calamity that you're in. That before you got into it, he knew how he's going to get you out of it. Oh, come on, somebody. I want to preach with people of God, the spirit this morning. I, I, I'm ready for you, I'm telling you. He, before, before you got into it, God already knew how he was going to get you out of it. So Joseph was the ambassador that was sent before to prepare. But then to bring them out in what we call the exodus. Because the word exodus in Hebrew simply means the coming out. There was another man by the name of Moses. Moses is a Jew. But Moses has been born in Egypt. And has been trained and brought up as an Egyptian. Has gone to the best schools in Egypt and is being prepared again to take over. Oh my God. Can you imagine? I mean how God, how God works. I was reading something this week in uh, social media. You know. Uh, and, and there's something about this country. Whether you know it or not. Hello? There's something about this country. Uh, I think about, if I'm not wrong, two or three prime ministers in the UK. They have had their fathers coming from Kenya. Uh, Obama is from Kenya. There was a, a list, a catalog of all the great people abroad whose fathers came from Kenya. And I stopped and I said, wait a minute. There must be something about this country. There must be something about this country. Must be. Right now we are having a, well, I don't know whether you support it or you don't, but right now we have got a lot of uh, talk about Kenya and how 
the Kenyan soldiers are going. But the thing about it, we are being discussed in Congress. Whether they are going to go or not, Kenya is being discussed in the Congress. Uh, they're going to discuss how they're going to, I was reading the papers, was coming here. The, the debate about the $5 billion which they're supposed to be giving in support. Now, whether they go or not, guess what? We're in the picture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody is discussing me. Hello? So Kenya is no longer in the dark. You hear what I'm saying? There's something about this country. So I went through the names, you know, and, 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 and as I'm speaking, I'm remembering Joseph, a foreigner, uh, goes out and uh, is lifted. Moses, somebody who's not supposed to be anywhere, is lifted from the waters of the river Nile. One who's not supposed to be leaving is lifted to be taking over. Of course, his inclination are more to his countrymen than to the goodies of Egypt. So he ends up uh, identifying himself with where he truly belongs and does not lose his identity because of the goodies of the land. In fighting for his people, ends up fleeing for his life Again, something that looked like so bad, but it was in the purposes of God, goes uh, to herd the cattle of his father-in-law Jethro. This is Bible history I'm giving you now. And while he is at uh, the mountain, uh, he now has to see a bush that was on fire, but was not being consumed. Now, you and I know very well that fire consumes. There's no fire that does not consume. Uh, no fire. Fire consumes. When I was growing up, one of the things my mother told me, don't play with fire. Don't play with fire. Now, there are some children, and most of them actually during my time and age, if you see the generation I grew up with, most of them have got ugly scars of fire burns. Fire burns because children would just be left alone and they would go and play with fire and then they end up hurting themselves. This was a bush that was on fire. In what we call typology, it was a type of the children of Israel who were being persecuted, who were on fire according to human sense and reasoning, but whatever they were going to go through, the fire that they were being lit on, in typology, Moses was being shown by God that they would go through a lot of fire, but they will not be consumed. That bush that was fire was a typology of Christians later on, uh, who would go through persecution, be it in Uganda, through uh, Idi Amin, uh, be it through Bokasa, or whoever you were, the ugly dictators who thought they would finish the church, be it uh, through people who took the scriptures and burnt them, thinking that there will be no record of the Bible. That bush that was on fire was a type of uh, the book uh, and Christianity that would never be consumed by any fire that they would go through. While he was still there looking, the Bible says that God called him and God tells him, I'm calling you and I'm giving you an assignment. Well, Moses was a stammerer. Moses was not uh, an eloquent speaker. And he began to doubt the choice that God had made. And God says to him, what is that? In your hand. He says, I have a rod. 
Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I'm speaking on the subject this morning. What's that in your hand? For you see, God will not use what is in somebody else's hand. God will use what is in your hand. God does not ask for your ingenuity. God does not ask for your strength. God was just asking Moses, uh, I want to you, first of all, to survey what is in your hand and get to establish what is in your hands. And as I speak, you need to be asking yourself, what is in your hand? God does not ask you to go and search out and then come with something that you have fished for him to use. God is asking what is in your hand. Moses was just an ordinary shepherd. Moses did not stand out among the other shepherds. His rod was a normal rod, just like the others. Uh, Moses did not hit the headlines being the greatest shepherd in his days. He was just an ordinary person, an ordinary man, not unique from the others. The rod was just a normal rod cut from a tree. It was not a tree that they had not seen. Yes, God doesn't have to use something that you don't have. He always uses what you have. That rod, that was an ordinary rod. When given to God, God took it and God gave it back. But the moment that normal rod that Moses was willing to give because it was normal, it was ordinary to everybody, nothing to talk about it. But the trick here was Moses was willing to give it to God. And the moment it was given to God, God gave it back to Moses. For you see, what you always give to God, God will give it back to you. But when God gives it back to you, it is not going to be the same. When God gives what you have given him, it does not come back the same way. Even when you give your money to God, God says he gives it back good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And that whatever you give God, he does not give it the way you gave. The Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 7 and verse 12, once that rod was given to God and given back to the hand of Moses, that rod terrified witches and wizards. Devils could not stand the rod of Moses. Exodus chapter 7 and verse 17 and 20 says, that same rod that was given back to Moses, the normal rod. Scripture says it was used to turn the waters of Egypt into blood. Can you think about some of these things that are quoted in Scripture? The same rod that was given to Moses was used to cause lies throughout all the land of Egypt. The rod that was given was used, Exodus chapter 9 and verse 23, to bring thunder and hail throughout the land. Oh my God, who could have believed that a normal rod, 
that was being held by a normal shepherd could do this kind of miracles. Exodus chapter 10 and verse 13. It was used to bring an east wind that brought the locusts across the land. God was moving. Exodus 14 and 16. It was used to cause waters of the Red Sea to stand up like a wall. This was the rod that made the waters of the Red Sea to dry up and to cause the people of God to walk on a dry land on the Red Sea. What was happening? The rod was at work. What do you have in your hand? Exodus 17 and 5. It was used to bring forth waters from the rock at Horeb to supply the needs. It was the same rod that Moses used to strike the the rock once and the waters gushed out and two million people were able to drink from a rod that was being used by this man called Moses. What do you have in your hand? The Bible says uh, there are other examples that I could use. Uh, Jesus Christ is in the wilderness uh, and the people were wondering what they were going to eat. They had been there for a while. They had followed Jesus Christ. Jesus was such a mighty teacher that they even forgot to eat. And the Bible says that there was a lad who had uh, fishes and loaves. We had, uh, and uh, how many fishes? Uh, Five loaves and two fishes. And he gave uh, the two Loaves and five fishes. And uh, when he gave out, the Bible says 5,000 people were able to be fed because of what somebody had in his hand but was just offering to give it to Jesus Christ. Had the boy not given what he had in his hand, the five loaves and the two fishes, guess what? The miracle of feeding the 5,000 people would not have taken place. What do you have In your hand, Mary or Bethany took a box of precious ointment, the book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 7 to 13, and gave it to Jesus. They thought that she was wasting her time. They thought that, oh, this lady is stupid because it was precious ointment. Little did they know that what she did would be recorded in scripture and her name would be mentioned in every pulpit of the universe. What do you have in your hand? Oh, Mary, all she had was a precious oil and she went and anointed the feet of Jesus Christ and everything changed from that time when she sacrificed the ointment that she had. What do you have in your hand? Dorcas in the book of Acts chapter 9 and verse 36 and to 39, all she needed and all she had was a needle and a thread, a needle and a thread, a needle and a thread, and her name is remembered in all pulpits of the year. What do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? Somebody who died uh, just could use a needle uh, and uh, use a thread. uh, And just because of a needle and a thread, uh, when she died, uh, she had to be resurrected uh, to continue what she was doing. Uh, She had to be brought back to life. Uh, She was too precious in the community because she used uh, what she had uh, in her hand. What do you have? I ask you this morning, what do you have in your hand. First Samuel chapter 17 and verse 40. David only has a sling, a sling and a harp. The others had arrows and all sorts of guns they were using at that particular time. But David didn't have all that. He had a sling and there was a giant who was threatening the children of God for 40 days came out shouting, do you have a man? And no one would dare to face the Goliath. There was a small boy who had a sling. And that boy said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Give me a chance. And with a sling, David goes. Scripture says when it was time for battle. Because it was time for battle. Look at somebody say it was time for battle. 
The Bible says that David ran forward. He could not wait even for the whistle to be blown. And all that David had was a sling that he knew how to use. They tried to give him an armor. He said, no, 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 no. Let me use what I am used to. What do you have in your hand? David went and with a sling, all he could do, it is to just take it in circles and the sling did the job. That's what he had. What do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? You behave like you have nothing. You walk like you have nothing. You talk like you have nothing. What do you have in your hand? What is it that God can use if only you gave it to him this morning? You came to church to be reminded that you've got something. Look at somebody and tell them you have something. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at somebody. I said, look at somebody and tell them you have something. You have something that you can use. Gideon, in the book of uh, Judges, all he had was trumpets, pitches, and harps. All he had in the book of Judges. And this time, they have been impoverished by the Philistines. Every time they would go to get their harvests, they would be taken away from them. And Gideon says, I'm the smallest of the tribe of Benjamin. I have nothing, oh God. And he had to be encouraged by Deborah. Thank God for Deborahs of today. Thank God for those who come and tell you, you can make it. Even when you don't feel like you can make it. Oh, come on somebody. Look at your neighbor and tell them I thank God for my Deborah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody who comes and sees what you have and you don't even know you have it. But they can tell you you can make it. There's something in your hand, Gideon. You have taps and you have trumpets and pitches. And God Almighty caused the strengthening of this lady to cause this man to come out of a hiding wine press and go and face the Philistines. And with nothing really but something called trumpets and pitches and harps, he went and then... God did the miracle. What do you have in your hand? What is this that God is waiting for you to use? What is this? Because there's something that God has given you. What is it that you have in your hand that God wants to use? A widow with two mites, Mark chapter 12 and verse 42 to 44. God says you have given the most. You have given so much than everybody else. What do you have in your hand? What is this that if you give to God, the nation will hear your name? What is this that you have if you give to Jehovah God, lives will be transformed. What is this that you have in your hand? If you give it to God, people will be blessed. Because there is something God has given you. And yet, you have not given to God. Can I say something here? God does not have you until he has what you have in your hand. God does not have you. Until he has what you have in your hand. For the life of me, I can't imagine how Israel would be if Moses held on to what he had in his hand. I can't imagine the slavery, the people of God would have been subjected to for years upon years. Maybe it could have lasted more than 400 years simply because somebody was holding on to what they had in their hand. People would have died like locusts. People would have been killed in Egypt. Life would be so difficult simply because somebody was holding on to what God was waiting to use. 
I wonder how many people are dying because you're holding on to what you have in your hand. I wonder how many people are subjected to pain and slavery because you're holding on to what you have in your hand. How many people are suffering simply because you have not given it to God for God to use it? What do you have in your hand? Even the man Moses I'm preaching about, who would have heard about Moses if he never gave what he had in his hand? Who would have read about Moses if he never used what he had in his hand? Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, there are people suffering because you're holding on to what you have in you. You're too comfortable. You don't care. You don't care about the many people waiting for you to give what you have in your hand. Once Moses gave it to God from his hand, it was given back to him. And it was used by God. So we need to realize that we can do more with what is in our hand once we give it to God. Once you give what God has given to you, a gift, a talent, a money, whatever it is that God has put into your hands, we can do more when it's given to God. Moses didn't have much. But he had a rod. What do you have? You will never be all that you are meant to be until you give it to God. That which is in your hand. You will never be all God intended for you to be. Until you give that which is in your hand. What do you have in your hand? The little boy said, two fishes, five loaves. Docker said, a needle and thread. Moses said, a rod. David said, a sling. Gideon said, pitches, harps, trumpets. That's all you have. The widow said, two mites. What do you have? What do you have? What do you have? Give it to God today. And see what God will do through you. Let's rise up for prayer. What do you have? Thank God Moses did not hold on to what he had. Thank God Moses gave the road to God. A whole nation's destiny was lying on that road. And had he held on to that road, we would not be talking about Israel today. They would have destroyed them. Finish them. We would not be reading about Moses. We would not even be having the book of Exodus. Thank God. He gave it to God. And God gave it back to him. And we have. A joy.
joyful ending of a nation delivered through which later the Messiah would be born. What do you have in your hand? Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for your word. Oh, God, help us to open our eyes to see what we have in our hands. And Father God, help us, Lord, to give it to you so you can use it and give it back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. For we are nothing, oh God, and you don't even have us if you don't have what we have in our hands. It's until, Lord, you have taken what is in our hands that you really have us. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. Be glorified, Lord. Let your spirit work in us. Let there be an explosion, oh God, here of you using people because they surrendered to you and gave you what was in their hands for you to use. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Are you going to allow yourself to die before you give God what is in your hands for you to see your next level? Are you going to live your life in being mundane? Just there? There is a part two of your life. It only happens when you give what is in your hands to God. That's the part two of your life. And begin to see what God will do. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Well, it's time to worship God with our giving, house of grace. Time to worship God with our giving. Only those who the revelation of what giving does clapped. Let me say that again. It's time to worship God with our giving, house of grace. <clears throat> there is nothing you're giving God that he has not given to you. Nothing, including yourself. Including yourself. Nothing that you're giving to God that he has not given to you. Amen. For all things belong to him. Silver, gold, a cattle on a thousand hills. Heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstool. King of kings. Lord of lords. At the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. If you're giving your tithes, please come forward as our tradition is. You're giving the part that belongs to God, to him. You say, God, I'm bringing the, your, this is not mine, it's yours. It's not yours. Don't eat what belongs to God. Take it to eat fries. And tomato sauce. Please stop. Eat what is yours. It will satisfy you. This tithe we are talking about and this offering, it's God's, not yours. Even when you have it, you're just a custodian because it already it is already God's. And if you misbehave with it, God will judge you. So you bring it to God. You're just a manager. 
Some people think because they have it, they can do whatever they wish. No. Mistake. Every time you get what he gives you, you put aside what belongs to God. Say, this is God's. In your moon. In the yake. See, young. Even if you see what's happening there, say, no, this is God's. This is God's. Amen. For he gives seed to the sower. But he also gives bread to the eater. So there is bread to eat and there is seed to sow. Yeah. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this very holy, auspicious moment. When, oh God, we say you are Lord, even over our finances. When we say, Lord, that we know that we are managers of all that you have given to us. And that, Lord, your part is intact. Bless your people this afternoon, O oh God. In a very special way, big way. May they never lack. May they always experience the flow of your supply because of their faithfulness. We thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Ashes, wait on us. In myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself, I give myself away. Give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can give myself away. is not my own to you I belong I give myself I give myself to you my life is not my own my life is not my own to you My life, my life is not my own To you I belong I give myself I give myself I belong to you I belong
Why don't we put our hands together and appreciate God for such a word? We can do better, please. Let's appreciate God for such a word this morning. I want us to appreciate God one more time because of our bishop. Bishop, we love you. You are the greatest preacher of all time. May God refresh you. Lift up one hand before God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you so much because you have seen it fit to challenge us, O oh God, to hand over that which you've already given unto us and we place it in your hand. Lord, as we start this week, we start in confidence that what, Lord, we have given unto you is standing out to be supernatural and miraculous in every way. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and be gracious to you. In your going out, in your coming in, in your labors, in your leisures, and in all you touch to do. May that which you have in your hand work out miracles. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout a big amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. Stay on the cutting edge. And until next time, amen. Welcome to House of Grace, where grace abounds. This is a grace news that keeps you updated on what's happening here, House of Grace. To all our first-time visitors, Karibuni Sana, it's always an honor to have a guest in the house. If this is your first time, please put your right hand up because our ushers have a special package just for you. We want to get to know you better. Please fill it in and let us know your information because we want to get back to you, answer your questions and pray for you. After this, we'll be having tea at a special tent right outside the church and we want to just share and have a wonderful time with you. So please don't leave immediately after the service. Join us for a cup of tea. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. as we explore and discover truths that we can apply in our lives. Paul is writing, remember, he's writing from prison. And one of the themes um, that actually stands out in this book of, of Philippians is the theme of joy. You know, someone will think, when you read uh, Philippians chapter 4, rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. You think he's sitting on a table. I love kuna kibuk stand up on you. With a lesser seed, he's just swinging yeah, from side to side and he's writing rejoice in the Lord <laughs> always and again I say <laughs> rejoice. Meaning joy comes from where? From Christ, from the Lord. It is not determined by what is happening on the outside. You could be broke but still joyful. Still Tamakin looking for work, but you still have the joy. The joy of the Lord. It comes from identifying or rather recognizing that the Lord is my source. Whatever happens, happens. But at the end of the day, my life is in God's hands. If you haven't joined yet, please join us every Sunday morning and let your spirit be revived. Let your heart be transformed by the word of God. There's a WhatsApp group that you could join by sending your number on 0725-659-444. Bible study every Sunday morning from 9 a.m. to 9.45. We look forward to seeing you again this coming Sunday and get ready to be blessed by the word. Our services are 9 a.m. Bible study, 10 a.m. our family service and Sunday school and crossroads, and 12.30 is our youth service. We look forward to a wonderful time every Sunday. God bless you. In Acts chapter 2 verse 46, the Bible says that every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. This is a call out for you. For the second part of this verse, that when we come from fellowshipping together, the Bible is saying that we meet also and break bread together in our homes. A time of fellowship, a time to review what we have learned, a place we can pray for one another, support one another, where we can build friendships, where we can have a support system in what we call grace groups. Are you part of a grace group? If you would like to be part of a grace group, please sign up after the service. We would love to train leaders among us, those that will be leading the small groups. Do you feel that maybe 
the nature of your lifestyle wouldn't be able to permit you to have people come to your home or you visit another home. We are in a digital age and I know we can have grace groups virtually. So for those of you that have a lifestyle or busy time when you're not able to go, but you will still like to be part of a grace group, we'll have virtual grace groups. So please still sign up and indicate I would like to be part of a virtual grace group because we want you to be part of a group that supports you, that stands with you, that prays with you. Sometimes we face difficult times and sometimes it's difficult to reach the pastor. But when you have another group of believers that are with you, then you have strength with you right where you are. Sign up today for a grace group. It's for your good. I promise you, you won't regret it. I'm a partaker. Of course, I love chini and conversations. They're hot. I'm a partaker, of course I'm growing. I'm a partaker, of course I love serving. I'm a partaker, of course I have many friends. I'm a partaker, of course I never leave the church. I'm a partaker, of course I enjoy a healthy group. I'm a partaker, of course I love celebrating and supporting. I'm a partaker, of course I love celebrating Imani yangu ipo kwa koe Welcome to Patriarchs Na, na mintaji ficha chini ya koe we mwamba We'll be having a prison's visit to the Langata Women's Prison on the 7th of April 2024. We'll be having it after the service from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. If you would like to be a part of those that will be ministering to those that are in Langata Women's Prisons, please sign up after the service and a form that will be presented for you there. Those of you that would like to participate, these are some of the things that we can bring. Tissue paper, a remis, Bar soaps, diapers for children, milk, biscuits, lollipops, sanitary towels, toothpaste, toothbrushes, and any kind of books. We also want to help the families that were affected by the fire that took place there earlier on in the month. Please, you can bring utensils for the kitchen. You can bring clothes for children and for adults. Anything you have in your home that you feel you can donate to the families that were affected by the fire that took place there, please be sure to bring. Remember, the date is the 7th of April and God wants to use you to minister to these women. Sign up after the service. See you then. Our next King's Daughters meeting will be on the 13th of April. Ladies, I want to give you early notice. Mark it out on your diary. Our guest speaker on that day will be our very own, Her Excellency, Pastor Dorcas Rigathi. Everything that you need is planted, grounded, founded in faith. For with faith, all things are... It doesn't matter whether yours is a retro faith, greater faith all you need is a grain of a master seed equal faith and god will activate whatever it is that you need mm. i tell you you better begin preparing your heart begin praying and getting ready for what god has in store for us as ladies for our king's daughters meeting on the 13th of april House of Grace is a caring church and every first Sunday of the month we bring non-perishable goods and clothes to reach out to the needy among us. Proverbs 19:17, one who is gracious to a poor man lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his good deed. Every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., we meet here for our Breakthrough Prayer Service. We invite you every Tuesday, 6 p.m. for a Breakthrough Prayer Service. Come and experience a breakthrough in your life. Today, we're diving into the importance of sleep for your body and mind. Getting enough sleep isn't just about feeling rested. It's crucial for your overall health and well-being. When you sleep, your body goes into repair mode, repairing muscles, organs, and tissues. Sleep also helps regulate your hormones, keeping your appetite in check and supports a healthy metabolism. Creating a bedtime routine and optimizing your sleep environment can help you achieve better sleep quality. Sleep also helps regulate your hormones, keeping your appetite in check and supports a healthy metabolism. Remember, prioritizing sleep is not a luxury, it's a necessity for a healthier, happier you. So, how much sleep do you need? Adults generally require 7 to 9 hours each night, 
while teenagers may need up to 10 hours. Take care of yourself, and make sleep a priority. Good night, and sweet dreams. Life. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at House of Grace HQ. House of Grace, doing church as a team.